Hey everyone, in today's video I'm going to be doing an improved version of my last editing tutorial. The last one did really well and I've improved since then so I decided I'd remake and throw in some new effects. So I'll leave the timestamps in the description if you're here for a specific effect and anyways let's get right into the tutorial. So the thing I wanted to start it with first is like these zoom and like sort of velocity effects. They're like very important specifically to Fearless's editing. So I'll just give an example of what one might look like here. A is level 196, I can tell he qualified. So now I'm going to show you how to make this. Just to give a quick example, I'm just going to delete these right here. So what I did was I keyframed these default keyframes right here. I went all the way to the end here, and then I scaled it up, and then I positioned it to where I wanted it to be, which, for example, would just be like right here. And then what I did next was I went back a little bit here, and I pressed these two buttons right here, selected these, and then dragged them way closer over here to my starting keyframes. I also added a little bit of a shake here, but I'm gonna get into these settings later. So if you wanna make this exactly, you'll follow some settings later. So now if you play this out, A is level 196, I can tell he qualified. You can see it looks exactly the same as mine. Another thing that he does that you might wanna replicate is if you select all of these, go in this menu, and then just select one of these. I usually use ease in. And then basically you just use this editor right here, which if it's, if it's not there for you, then you're just gonna wanna press this arrow for the drop down menu and then you're just going to want to edit these like I usually drag these forward which basically means that it'll just be the fastest at this part and then it'll slow down gradually basically it'll look like this a is level 196 I so you might see like a black bar here and that's probably because these two graphs are not scaling up at like the same rate. So the reason for the black bar may be that the positioning is going faster than the scaling and it's already trying to position more over to where my final keyframe is supposed to be and the scaling's not there yet. So it hasn't scaled more to the left to get rid of that black bar. So you're probably just gonna have to like edit like these like a little bit. You're gonna have to screw with these. I can't really get it right now, it's sort of it's a bit hard to do. Basically, you just play around with these until the black bar just goes away. So the next thing I want to go over is subtitles. So subtitles, they're actually like really easy. Last time, what I did was I just said type it out and then just like keyframe the source text. But you're not going to be doing that this time, so don't don't keyframe the source text. All you're going to want to do is just type out text like I just did example number one here. And then to make it centered like this, what you're going to want to do is select it and then hold control. And you can see that you have like that line there, you drag it along. So for example, just put it like right there where it was like before. Make sure your anchor point right here is in the middle. And then you're going to want to go over to this menu over here in the effect controls, scroll down. So if you want to add like an outline or something, just check this stroke. I usually have mine at like 18. It looks something like that. Anyways, if you want like a little like pop animation, these are what these keyframes are going to be. So I'll just play it out just so you can see what it'll look like. So first the keyframe to scale at 140 and then you move forward four frames and then you're going to want to add 20 to that and then you're going to want to move forward three frames and then take off five from that and then you'll get something that looks like this. So now these are going to be like a huge time saver for you. All you're going to want to do is hold alt on your keyboard and then drag it forward and it will just duplicate it. Just change the text and then boom. See that they look pretty smooth. So these subtitles will save you like a lot of time and they look actually like really good. So the next thing I want to go over that's actually like really similar to Fearless's stuff is he does subtitles, but sometimes he like has the colors changing while doing it. And that's the effect right here called S underscore hue sat bright. And then basically you're going to want to keyframe this like hue shift. Basically, if you like start messing with this, you'll see that the colors just start to change. If I just turn it to like one, for example, there, that's the highest it'll go. And if I put it at the beginning here, I'm just going to delete this. If I put it at the beginning here and I play it, you'll see that the colors change. He does that a lot, but the thing is that he has like a different color on the fill. Like for example, if I just say it's like red, you can see now the fill color will also change. As this doesn't look exactly like his, he probably just like positions them in other places like towards the middle and he does like other animation within stuff. And then he has like different colors obviously because he's not going to do something like that. But this is probably a way to like replicate that effect. So next thing I want to go over is shake effects. I'll just play this little example. Just it's it might be kind of loud, so just uh, turn down your volume if you have it like high. So basically, it looks something like that. I also have like a scale effect that doesn't really matter, but I'll just show you. This is S underscore shake right here, and I'll show you the settings to it. The amplitude is 0.2. The frequency is 64. I turn on motion blur, obviously. 
And then I go in this tilt shake here. My tilt rand amp is 18. My tilt rand frequency is 19.6. This is just zero. Tilt wave frequency is 0.5. And then that's just zero as well. So if you add that onto a video, you can also add it onto like text, for example. I'll show you that in a second. You'll get something that looks like this. Now I'm just going to put it on text or something. I'm just going to use that, for example, and just paste it onto there. Give it one second. It'll just look something like that. If you're looking for a more calm shake, like if you take a look at this top left text here. All right, I'm gonna come right back. I'm gonna get the, my uh, Cheerios with water. To replicate that, all you're gonna wanna do is you're gonna wanna go in here, amplitude 0 0.05, your frequency at two, and then your tilt shake at 12, and your tilt ran frequency at one, and then this at 0.5, and then the rest of that just at zero. So if you just add that onto text or a video, actually, then you'll get an effect right. that looks something like that. Right I'll try to paste on the video just for an example, like maybe like my outro right here. You'll see it just has a slight shape like that. I know that Fearless does that a lot, so that's just how to replicate that. So the next thing I want to go over is motion tracking. Motion tracking is actually like really simple. I'll just do an example right here. Just find something that you want to track, scale into it, just turn the size up, and then you're going to want to put it in the middle. So now you're going to want to keyframe the position, and then on your keyboard, you're going to want to click shift, and then the right arrow key to go forward five frames. Then you're going to want to reposition that in the middle, and then just repeat that process. Just shift, right arrow key, then just reposition it to the middle. So just keep on doing that. I'll just do like a sort of time lapse of this. So I'm just going to stop it right there. And then if you take a look at this, um. you can see that it's following this text right here. That's just how you motion track. It's pretty easy. It takes a little while, but it looks good. So next thing I want to go over is like some transitions. I know that Fearless uses something like uh, this a lot. So I'm going to leave a download link to this thing in the description. But another transition I will make manually. So I'm just going to take this clip like right here. So what you're going to want to do is I usually have an adjustment layer. So let me just put that like there. And then you're going to want to add an effect called transform onto it. So after you add this adjustment layer, you're going to want to go into this transform thing. And you're going to want to keyframe the scale here. Probably put it closer to the end right there. And then you can just scale it up a little bit right there probably put these closer together put this closer to the end there and then what you're going to want to do is you're going to uncheck this thing and then just turn that all the way up to 360 and if you give this a look Neighbor. you can see at the ending it zooms in really fast with the motion blur and it can actually transition really well into like text and stuff like if i were to add this over here this was the old shake effect let me just like put that in um the middle there and then just play it from the beginning of this clip you can see how it looks you know um roblox they have um hello neighbor you can see it sort of transitions really well so next thing i want to go over is audio distortion the first effect i'm going to go over is something called flanger it gives it like an sort of an alien effect voice you just add that on and then you just click edit this so the initial delay time right here you want to be 9.77 you want your final delay time right here to be 17.84 you're gonna want to turn this all the way up to 360 then you're gonna want to make this at 39.2 percent you're gonna want to turn the modulation rate right here to 5.597 and then the beat should automatically adjust then you're gonna want to check special effects right here and then you're gonna want to make it really wet mm -hmm. basically if you just give this a listen it's gonna sound like really stupid Dude, oh my God. <laughs> It's gonna sound something like that. Next, I'm gonna go over like a bass boosted effect. Basically, all you're gonna wanna do is go here and then just search up the distortion. Just scroll down here. You'll see it's under audio effects right here, distortion. Add that on here. You wanna click edit. Basically, just go on the preset. You can tell maximum pain. Uh, give it a listen. Dude, oh my god, please just stop talking. Yeah, basically, you can do that. If you want it to be quieter, then just actually just delete this. And then just do that. Try to make these like equal. I usually try to do that. And you can see you're embarrassing. You see, it's a bit quieter. I would recommend making it quieter because that last one was like really loud. And then another effect that I figured out how to do. I don't know why the hell you would ever want to do this, but um, just search up a uh, notch and then you'll get a uh, notch filter. So just add this on right here and then just click edit. 
and then just maybe grab like this two right here and then just raise this and just prepare yourself for this it'll just be like sounds like a microwave i don't know why you would want to do that but um you can so that's cool so next effect i'm gonna go over is actually like really simple and really easy like all it is is just type in tint and you just add that it's black and white i know fearless does that a lot with like sort of like a rain effect over it that's probably just like a green screen which i'll go over right after this basically what you can do with this is i think he does this sometimes to give it a little color correction but you can change the amount of the tint and you can also change like these colors right here you usually keep it at like black and white though this is just for like a sad moment in the video that's really easy now I'm going to go over green screening and I'm just going to use an example on my outro right here. You can see that it's just a green screen here. You can do it with like literally anything. You can look up something green screen and you'll find it. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to search up ultra key. You're going to want to add that onto the video with the green screen and then key color. Click on this eyedropper tool and then click on the color and then boom, just the green's gone. And then if you play it, yeah. you can see that it plays and it's a green screen. So that's how that works. So next thing I want to go over is a fisheye effect. I know Furious actually uses it a lot and it's actually like really simple. What you're going to want to do is just search up fisheye and you're going to get this effect called S underscore warp fisheye. Just add that onto your video. You're going to see that you get the fisheye. You're going to change like the center of like the X, Y. Basically you can change like the amount. Like that's, that's a lot right there. Basically that's just how you do a simple fisheye like that. Probably other ways to do it, but this is like a really simple way that you can see. Yeah, you got like a fisheye right there. I know Furious does that a lot. So that's basically how you do that. Next effect I want to go over, I'll show an example of it on screen. I know someone asked me about this before and it was like a sort of screen bending effect and I figured out how to do it. So I'm just going to share it with you guys here. <laughs> so what you're going to want to do is just look up 1080 and then you're going to want to add this effect right here and you're going to want to add it onto your video. And then you're going to want to play around with this curvature here. If you see, and you get like that screen bending thing. And if you saw it in the video, sort of did something like that. If you keep lowering the number, you can see that you get an effect that looks exactly like how his did. Okay, so basically for this editing pack, I included basically all of the background music I use in my videos, and I also threw in some sound effects that CD uses. I put these all in a Google Drive. There will be a link in the description to check it out and download the stuff, so check that out. Anyways, that's it for the editing tutorial. If you liked it, then let me know by leaving a like. Definitely check out some of my other content. I do a bunch of squads fill videos, and they're pretty funny. If you enjoyed, definitely subscribe for more. We're really close to 2,000 subscribers. Anyways, that's it, and I'll see you guys all in my next video. Bye.